1159 of Radio Free America. This is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the walls. The chair is against the walls. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this your song. <laughs> And welcome, everybody, to our Daily Gun Show. We come to you live every night at midnight Eastern. That's 9 Pacific for about an hour each night. We'll do three gun-related topics each day, different topics throughout the night. We plan those out on Monday, so if you'd like to help build the show, join us on Mondays and offer suggestions. Uh, let's see. We, uh, simul we run it on YouTube and simulcast it over at gunchannels.com, where we're watching the comments from the people that are watching the show live. We'll take the best of audio and post that on iTunes as a podcast. We appreciate everybody that's watching the shows now or in the future, especially those that leave us comments, like, subscribe to the channels. All those actions let us know you're out there. They also hopefully get us recommended to more listeners, and that is one of our goals. We really do appreciate the people that take the time to do that. We have hosts. we got Bob jumping in from Canada. Thanks for joining. Hey, glad to be here. And we got Jimmy jumping in from Phoenix. Hey, what's up? Good to be here. Thanks. I'm down here in Tucson. So uh, we are starting episode number 483. It's Wednesday, so it's entertainment tonight. We just take a break at the moment at the beginning, though, just in case anything happened during the day talking about, worth talking about. Uh, I got nothing. Took the dog to the vet. She's doing better. So other than that, nothing. That's good to hear. Did you put her back on the antibiotics or whatever, or she didn't even need that? Uh, well, long story short, it's um, it's a bacterial thing. So they finally got all these results back. It took two weeks, so did the follow up, um, and it's a bacterial thing that she's got in her lungs. So uh, it'll take six to eight weeks. Got her some augmenting, and uh, she should be all right. Got two refills for it. So I guess they're just saying we got to monitor, make sure it doesn't mess her up. So she'll be fine though. That's good to hear. Yeah, it was nail biting. All right, so uh, we're talking entertainment today. The first topic is Matt's chat. So see you have a chat tonight. We might as well dig into that. Then we'll be talking good idea, bad idea, and all the other stuff we talk about. So never enough ammo's top 10 list is our topic for today. I know people love him and hate him. He seems to be doing real well with them. So I guess the audiences like him. But I know a couple of people who basically quit listening to Matt altogether because he keeps putting top 10s into them. And they don't like, I guess, the format or listening to all that. What do you guys think? Yeah, I've I have heard that criticism a couple of times. Uh, but personally, I I don't know. I think they're entertaining when I get to listen to them. I just it's just at a bad time of night for me, so I haven't gotten a chance to catch them all. So I don't know if that criticism of people getting tired of them is legitimate. Maybe I guess if they listen in every week, I guess I don't know. But for me, I think they're entertaining when I get to listen in. I don't really care that much about what his favorite kept top 10 whatever is <laughs> it just doesn't matter to me so i find myself yelling at the computer a lot like you know you know i disagree like the top 10 like hit songs and you know they always leave out classics like matt's a heavy metal hater and stuff like that so i mean it's entertaining That's yeah, I mean, they're definitely not ultimate top 10 lists or anything, but it's interesting to see the group of people and the conversations that spur off from them, for sure, I guess. So there's obviously a lot of, well, there's not obviously, but there are a lot of people saying that they enjoy them out there. So if anybody wants to put in their top five, top 10 lists or top fives, feel free. Top five, top fives? Hank, Hank saying list or no, just interested in talking about guns. Most of the time we're talking about guns in match chats. Eh. It slips sometimes. <laughs> Travis is saying it's his chat. He can do what he wants. Don't want you if you don't like it. No, but see, his audience is part of the chat. So, in a way, we're even more of the chat than he is. So, I think that the collective, the, the group, should tell him what to do. Or we could have laws. Or just be laws. Easier. Like rules. Uh, DPT is saying didn't like it at first, but it's growing on him. I go back and forth. Uh, I definitely don't like the ones that I have no interest in, like the games or stuff that I just have to do. Or, you know, 
Yeah, yeah video game. Video, whenever stuff turns into video games, it gets it's it's sometimes it's cool, but then they get into stuff that I don't know what I'm talking about and that. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, whatever. And then the anime stuff, I'm not really into that. There's like some of that stuff that's cool, but some of the nerd stuff gets weird. So I don't know if you're watching the YouTube side, but uh, David's saying um, that viral infection in her lungs, if you're giving her augmentin, uh, just make sure that you listen to her lungs every day for fluid accumulation. I don't know if they warned you about that. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that was a concern of mine, too, is that she she's supposed to be getting better, but she keeps, like, well, she's acting like she's better, but then she keeps that coughing stuff up. So that's what that's the, the thing that I'm trying to keep an eye on. So, yeah, thanks for that. What the hell? All right, so um, people are listening to some of their favorite top fives, I guess. Thought he's saying the ones he's involved in he likes and the ones that he's not involved in he hates. Top five fake movie guns. Is that one? Was there a top five fake movie guns? Cole were saying that on the YouTube, on the gun channel side. I don't remember that one. I think we had steadily, movie. steadily was saying, oh crap, lost it. Uh, top five best guns, uh, worst guns, and cache weapons. So I guess that's his top three top fives. That he likes. Yeah, but it's the saying the top five candy bars. That one was okay. I learned a couple of candy bars in there, like uh, heavy, stupid, take five or whatever stupid candy bar that was. Gross thing. Yeah. That I mean, it wasn't gross. It's chocolate, but you don't need all that crap in there. But I will give it to them. They were a buck for like a dozen of them. So, pretty cheap. Um, he says, Matt Pink saying he's running, he's done them for so long that he's running out of ideas. I don't know. They had some good ones. The 80s toys would be a good one, I think. And there was another good one that came up recently. He thinks ones are good that are stupid sometimes, though. They mentioned the Mars bar. Mars bar is just a Milky Way. Quit acting like it's different. <laughs> George out there said the uh, top ten vampire movies. That was a that was a funny one. Yeah, because you knew those were all going to be same ten or five or whatever it was. Yeah, the Zagnut is a good one. You had a Zagnut before? No. Bob, you ever ate a Zagnut candy bar? No, I don't think I would even buy one with a name like that. Whatever. Yeah, you, you ever eat a Butterfinger? Of course. Bob, you ever eat a Butterfinger? Yeah, I've had a Butterfinger. You oh. guys are you eating Butterfingers? They're okay. Whatever. They're like the best candy bar. So a, a Zagnut is just a Butterfinger. Instead of having chocolate on the outside, it's for in the summer when there wasn't air conditioning. They would put toasted coconut on the outside of a Butterfinger. So it's like one of them round things that they can get now. Oh, that's the worst. I hate I hate coconut. Oh, well, so that wouldn't be that wouldn't be up my alley at all. <coughs> coconut might actually be the worst. Whatever. <laughs> oh, that was the one. Top five ice cream. That was gonna be a good one. Thanks, Clover. Yeah, except I think he forgot about it. I don't know if he was drunk tonight or just being weird, but uh, I don't know if he wrote that one down. It was a little stupid piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, Butterfinger with coconut on the outside. You don't know what you're missing. So that, that's, that sounds like the word. Yeah. Whatever. We'll try. We'll think about it, but I doubt it. <laughs> I don't care. So <laughs> we'll, we'll move on, I guess. I don't know. Sorry. Oh, we're going to talk about Matt's sucky-ass chat tonight. So he had a horrible chat tonight. He made me... The quit like in Star Wars. Him and P two two six nut and Dog Body were in there ragging on every tiny minutia of this last Star Wars movie to the point where you don't even want to watch Star Wars anymore. Like every once in a while, when these nerds talk about something like you know some goofy thing that nerds know about about the Star Wars, it's like, oh okay, that was interesting. Or like, oh, did you know that this and this and this happened? I'm like, oh shit, I never thought about that. But they were going nuts on it today, and it was yeah, it was boring, and they ruined it. And they ruined Star Wars. Oh, such a pity. It's Whatever. Series, anyway. It's a good movie. And Disney is doing what they're going to do to it. But, you know, you just got to figure, hey, it's a movie. Like, I mean, I can understand getting into things, but 
Yeah, but Star Wars is kind of ruining itself. Like, I can understand that they're trying to broaden themselves to a new audience and get hip for the younger crowd and whatnot, but they also got to remember that they're going to have loyal, you know, weird 40-year-old fans and stuff like that that are true to the old stuff, and yeah, you know, he's, they got to... You're just trying to gouge more money out of dummy pockets. It's an interesting set of characters in this, like an environment or a universe or whatever. So they keep making video or movies about it. I can understand that. But like uh, Clover saying, you know, before he left, it was supposed to be all politics and whatever. And he sort of opened it up to Q&A. And then I think at the two hour mark, they just said, fuck it, started talking about Star Wars. And it from like at least nine to like 945 or whenever I left, it was just... <coughs> into the minutia of the last couple of Star Wars and stuff. Did you see that robe? <laughs> oh no, it's like, did somebody's force work with somebody else's force? And then if they would have been trained before, would they have been the same? And then Luke was bad and like uh, blah, 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 blah. And then none of them mind that like Luke can just levitate like a uh, freaking, you know, Wami or whatever the hell who fucking levitate like uh guru or some shit like he's just levitating on another planet or something and all of a sudden jedis can do that now like okay then if they can do that i would have thought yoda super jedi would have just killed darth vader when he was a kid or something like come on the jedis could just sit on another planet and make yeah, that's the thing if jedis could do that then why hasn't yoda been doing that exactly yeah so uh that part is kind of annoying and uh well now we're getting into it <laughs> uh, i just could care less about that whole thing. I'm just saying, I mean, I was a little kid and I was introduced to it, obviously, when it was already like 15, 20 something years old or whatever. So, I mean, but it was it was a kid thing for me. The older ones, the ones from the 70s, that's what I go off of. And yeah. I feel like and the, newer, the newer ones ruined it. You, you figure they're going to make a movie and, you know, they're going to make a movie anyway. They've got to make a science fiction movie every once in a while. So, you know, they're adding Star Wars to it. Huh. Anyway. So that's Matt's top 10 lists. If you're not familiar with who we're talking about, I can't imagine anybody watching tonight wouldn't. But if you're listening to the chat, you never heard of this guy, Never Enough Ammo. This guy on YouTube that does videos. And uh, he does some live chats on Mondays and Wednesdays. And things to do is these top 10 lists with the panel and then the audience. And well, I guess we've been talking about, about him here for a bit. Yeah, most of the show is it's just, yeah, once in a while he's. Yeah. Uh, too much Star Wars. That's all I can say. All right. Well, we're going to get into a fight here in a minute with good idea, bad idea. But before we do, we'd like to take a break between the first and second segment of the show each day to feature one of the members over at Gun Channels. Today, we're featuring uh, uh, Ghost. So uh, Ghost is a relatively new member, but jumped in with both feet and uh, really has helped uh, change the face of Gun Channels here in the last few months. Pretty cool. Met up with them on the uh, Gun Show Loophole Tour. We had a pretty epic experience there. I think we've talked about it with, uh, you know, just sort of changing plans. Midway through the day, we had done the live show, and I was sitting in front of one of the missile silos, I think, or right, in, you know, right down the street from one of the missile silos, I think. And uh, when we ended the show, I think we were doing the show at noon then, whatever time it was, middle of the day in Arkansas that day, I uh, had planned to go to the rest of the missile silos, the rest of the, like, whatever, 17 or 16 silos. Decided not to because they were too far away and they were all privately owned. Uh, Ghost was on the way to the last one I wanted to visit before I headed out of town. He said, sure, let's meet up at this gun shop. The gun shop owner turned out to be the guy that owns that silo I was headed to. Not only that, he took us out there and uh, it was awesome. So totally meant to be. That was a great first meeting with uh, him. And then later on uh, in the year, we met up again at Tulsa. And it was a great experience seeing him uh, check out a show like that. Thanks again to over out there for letting everybody know about the media passes and ghost took ultimate advantage of that and just did awesome so i think he's got a good uh head start to hitting shot show and now he's hitting shot show with both feet so really neat to uh it's why we built gun channels right is that's why we do this show is to uh be part of this uh the new channels and projects happening and yeah ghost is a pretty freaking cool guy that was definitely awesome to see him jump in here like you were saying just you know raring to go he seems like a good dude. Had some good conversations with him, and uh, look forward to meeting him one day. Yep, uh, Ghost is pretty good. Dude. Hopefully, it'll be in about what eleven days or twelve days or something. Yep. 
seems like most people are talking shit about him out there. Don't really like him, but heck, we like him. So we're gonna we're gonna stand by him as our featured member of the day. No, he's all right. You got your back, Ghost. Don't worry about what them other guys say, especially that Clover That's, guy. Besides, you got to commit. So I mean. All right, so now we can dig into this good idea, bad idea segment. Back in the olden days of the show, 460-something shows ago, it was just me and Bob, and it got pretty rough. We would tie our hands together with an old piece of rope and then maybe an old, sometimes bat, like a jumper cable, something like that, maybe a chain, and then we would just grab a knife and start slicing. But YouTube got all mad about that, and PETA, PETA got all mad. So uh, we started doing it just with a, a verbal debate, and uh, we call it the good idea, bad idea. So today it's ankle holsters. Bob, good idea, bad idea. Uh, uh. Uh oh. He doesn't even know. I, you know what an ankle holster is? Good idea. Good idea. Good idea, Jimmy. <laughs> Please, it's hard for me to keep a straight face even reading the thing. Bad idea. What? I hope you're playing devil's advocate because it's obviously a good idea. Jimmy's wrong. So now you got to justify why you're got such a crazy position. Or you're just playing devil's advocate. We can understand that. Well, either or. I mean, what what fantastical situation is someone going to be in where they're going to like somersault and get their gun out of their, you know, it was, what, are we talking about an ankle holster for a backup gun or like deep concealment primary carry or what? I don't know. I don't know if it, it hasn't been <laughs> in the question. So all. Any? Oh, horrible. Either way, horrible. So primary, you got to get to your gun quick. Okay, so you got to bend over, yank up your pant leg, take your gun out. If you got any retention strap or anything like that, take, move that, which, excuse me, most ankle holsters don't have. But nonetheless, still got to get to the gun, which is going to be a mission in itself. Secondly, pulling it out and getting back up into either low ready or shooting position you're, you're done. That's a primary carry for deep concealment. Backup gun. You're in a situation where your other gun runs dry or malfunctions. So now you're in the middle of taking fire, <coughs> which may not be a lot. You know, yeah, most gun gunfights don't last long, whatever. Let's just say you're using it as a backup gun. And you go to get it, and you run dry. You're dead. Anyway, second situation for a backup gun. You're with somebody. You want to arm them because they don't have a gun or for whatever reason. Now you got to bend over and get your gun. It all it all comes down to you got to bend over, hike up your pant leg, get your gun out, and come back up. Tell me why that's a good idea. No, I mean you're right. If you if you can insist that every gunfight, every lethal force incident is going to be a you know quick decision, like some kind of quick draw, like an, an old West movie. Yeah, you're right. Then yeah, that would be a bad place to keep it. You're also assuming that everybody has other options like a belt or some other way of uh, carrying that works in their workplace or wherever it is they happen to be. And you're also assuming that people aren't sitting down, like they're sitting in a car. And now it's going to be so much easier to draw from your holster? I don't think so. So for lots of reasons, I think ankle holsters are completely valid. I would still suggest that they have to take their eyes off of the threat in order to get the gun. Yeah, again, so what? So it's, you're not always needing to grab your gun when... Uh, you know, in the middle of a draw. So I guess that could happen. I guess there's a chance that somebody's going to have, what, drawn a gun on you, and you're going to decide, no, I'm going to draw and, and fire before I comply with whatever the hell they're telling me to do. So obviously nobody thinks that's a valid option. So, uh, you know, again, do you carry a gun assuming that you're going to have to draw it? I mean, some people carry with the ability to draw it quickly, but uh, it's silly to sit around thinking that every – Lethal force incident is going to be some sort of face-to-face -face, uh, draw and shoot type of situation. So uh, because of that, you could be in a situation where uh, you're broke down or a weird thing happens, you know, protest or something, and you got to stop in traffic unexpectedly, and now you're gridlocked in, and you have plenty of time to reach down and grab it and prepare. Um, at least in Arizona, brandishing isn't an issue. So if I needed to, I could get it out of my ankle ahead of time when I suspected a, poor, a bad situation, uh, keep it behind me or in my pocket or something, stage it somewhere where it's easier to grab, uh, Mexican carrier or whatever, and then uh, uh, have it available. Uh, you're right, though. If you're face-to-face -face and somehow somebody's like, I'm going to kick the shit out of you unless you draw faster than I can kick the shit out of you, you're going to get the kick shit out of you, I guess. 
Yeah, no, I hear you. And I'm, and and trust me, and I hear your side of the argument also. <clears throat> but I'm looking at it as that is kind of more of a specific situation based type of thing. Like an ankle holster will work, but only in specific situations. Whereas I'd rather be ready for any possible situation. So I'd rather have it quicker access, stuff like that. Let's talk about somebody who might wear, I don't know, scrubs. Uh, yeah. No gun or an ankle gun. Off body carry or right. purse gun well, or purse gun. Yeah, yeah. No. So a lot of people work at offices where they've got like a whatever you call a shirt and then the pants t- and the shirt tucked in or whatever, and you know it's not going to work for them to have a, a waist carry. And then honestly, we live in a pretty safe country, one of the safest countries on the planet. If you list all the countries on a big list, we're at like 110 out of 200 or something. Uh, we're pretty safe. So I think most people could probably get by with a 380 or a 9 or a 357 on their ankle and not need a massive blaster, a hand solo blaster in their pants for work. I mean, I mean when you're sitting around at work, what's the odds? There's it's almost no odds. I mean, you've got almost no odds of getting mugged or carjacked, but you've got whatever those odds are, you know, minus a thousand percent of having something happen in your workplace. But you're carrying because you never know. And again, would you rather have nothing or something in an ankle holster? And that's where it would be primary carry. Now it might turn secondary when you get back in your car and you strap on your hand solo blaster. <laughs> yeah, you know, you never know. I guess I'm I'm half in and half out. I, I could see it working for specific situations. And I can see it working for, like you're saying, you know, office type of things or whatever. But I, I'm personally, I'm against it. Do you ever think about the, oh, my ankle. So let's say you're getting attacked, mugged, raped, beat up. Yeah. So, oh, my ankle. <laughs> and you reach down for your ankle and they're like, oh, we better let this guy grab his ankle because he's hurt. <laughs> Excuse me, rapist. My shoe is untied. <laughs> no, what you do is as they attack, you go and cover your head, crouch down into a into a fetal position, and then when they go, oh, he's no threat, you just stealthily draw your ankle gun and shoot them. <laughs> it's just easy to draw from a fetal position. What can I say? I feel this is sufficiently solved. Wear one if you want one. You might die. All right, well, here's the big question then. Do you own an ankle holster, Bob? No, because I don't have a gun little enough for one. Me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have many. So here's the other thing. Uh, ankle holster. What do you do on the other ankle? Uh, a lot of people, you didn't say it, but a lot of people will go, I don't want an ankle because then my one foot is lopsided and I can't walk around with my one foot every mother foot all the time. So then you can offset it by putting a mag on the other side or what I suggest, a tourniquet on the other side. Again, being in an office situation or something, uh, SWAT tourniquets are basically a giant fat rubber band uh, folded up. They're about half the size, width of a pack of cigarettes. What did I say? Half as thick as a pack of cigarettes? But about the dimensions of a pack of cigarettes and then a big rubber band folded up in a baggie so it's very soft. Uh, something like that in like uh, Wilderness Tactical, a place out of uh, Phoenix, right up there by Jimmy someplace. Uh, they make, uh, in Phoenix, they make a uh, Made in USA uh, ankle rig that's um, more like a money belt or something, I guess you'd call it. It's not really a holster as much as just a couple of pouches. So a knife, tourniquet, um, I don't know, bandage or something. So people can, uh, mag, like I was saying, so people can counterweight their ankle carry or... Uh, Again, an office situation where it might look weird to have a tourniquet on to most people. Uh, have your tourniquet subtle. Yeah, I got one with uh, extra ammo. <laughs> I got one that's just a, its own mag pouch. It's got a double mag pouch on it, so it'll like counter the bat, the weight, I guess. So I think that's solved. Jimmy's now convinced. Actually, he he was convinced beforehand. 
Well, no, I mean, that's, that's, I don't know. I, I think that it's, it's valid to bring up because there may or may not be maybe somebody for the first time listening. And, you know, there's, there's the other side of the coin that they got to look at. There is downsides to ankle carry. So let's point it out. All right. Just reading some of the comments out there on both the sides here. Gary, you guys are Gary saying uh, old and fat and have bad knees. Ankle holsters are a bad idea. And yeah, I hear that. If you consider Jimmy's crazy ass, like, oh, I'm going to call it the FUD argument. Like, oh, I don't understand. So I'm going to use some freaking Yankee exaggeration of like some crazy adventure in a comic book. Uh, but what about when you're sitting in a car? What about if you're sitting at a desk? What about if you're sitting in, in a recliner? Uh, again, I'm going to ask what's easier to get to and what's more comfortable. Wearing a freaking gun on your waist, but inside the waistband when you're sitting there watching TV or whatever, or a thing on your ankle. And I don't know about you guys. I'm sitting right here right now. I can go like this. I just tugged. I put my hand on my knee and I tugged. And I have, if I had an ankle holster on, it would be exposed right now. Uh, Every argument you just made, you can make that for a shoulder holster, though. You can, except here's the difference between an ankle holster and a shoulder holster. Crazy? Or nobody knows it's there. Weird guy wears a whole shoulder holster? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That guy, Unless you're in the, you say you're in an office, you could be wearing a you know a sports coat or something like that, a little blazer or something. Well, I hear you, yeah. I mean, get one of them like old fashioned Rockford file style where they're like a bra and they go around your back and they yeah, just, a little, put a little patch on your, on your elbow, you know. Yeah, or you could just carry a little 32 Smith and Weston in your pocket. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd carry in my pocket, but when I'm sitting down, that ain't the greatest idea. If I got loose enough pants on, I can do kind of some kind of a leg. You, know, you, carry, you carry in your spoke, sport coat pocket. Oh, yeah. Well, then I'd have to, I don't know, become a 70-year-old man who wears a sports coat around. I'm telling you, the, you could just solve that by getting a little mouse gun, get a little 43 or something, and put it at about 430, and it's like it ain't even there. So your answer is nine millimeter. Let's move on. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous. Obviously, he's got no other no other positions to use a thirty use a thirty six too. Um, I think we'll move along because obviously Jimmy's cracking on the pressure. Maybe it's late. Well, uh, I don't know what do you want to do next. Let's do the gun shop. We don't have to do nothing. You can just sit here smoking cigarettes and watch this happen. It's like the yeah. film. It's like yeah. okay, we're gonna watch film chat. No, we fall asleep. Except we're looking at a cool gun shop in Texas. Up on the gun show loophole tour is Don's Gun Shop. This is a small shop in San Antonio. It's right off the highway, so it's easy to find. It's a nice little shop, and we were taking a tour of the San Antonio gun shops with a friend, Edge, and he made sure that we visited this one. We're trying to find interesting, unique shops on the tour, not just the big box stores, and this is definitely the kind of shop we're looking for. Been in business a long time. They have a lot of reloading stuff and lots of interesting things. If you're a collector or looking for a gift for somebody, this would be a perfect shop to check out. So this is uh, Don's Gun Shop in San Antonio. Leave us some comments if you've been there. And stay tuned for more on the Gun Show Loophole Tour. As always, thanks for watching. This was a short one because it didn't take a heck of a lot of pictures. It was a small shop, but I think there's quite a few cool things to check out. And I think first we can check out this wicked Smith & Wesson poster. Or is that two? Oh, that's one poster. That's kind of cool stuff. They don't make those things like that anymore. Have you seen anything like that with modern guns on it? No. So like a directory, it looks like? Smith & Wesson directory? I guess so. It was just sort of uh, probably, you know, put it up at a range or put it up at a gun shop, and then you don't have to have the whole inventory. You can have your customers point at what they're looking at or whatever. Actually, the guy that in works. Pennsylvania had a similar thing because people would come in and not know the gun they were looking for, and he could say, which one does it look like? And that would give them like a way faster way to figure out what they're trying to get. This can't be that old. It's got a Sigma on there. It's S9, SW9F. It's still yeah, it looks modern. I mean, not modern-ish. I mean, you know, I don't see any, well, I don't, I can't see the top because of the glare, and I don't see no m ps or nothing. No, no, the Sigma is the closest thing to it. They got a Sigma yeah. 9. 40, and then this one in 940. I guess this is a compact. So this has to be, still be a cool poster to have. You can judge them from the like wear and fading and stuff. I'm guessing it's pretty old. Anyway, that was kind of neat. And then uh, I got this uh, this duct tape piece of cardboard on the brick. 
pretty classy. I like that. But, um, <laughs> this is like right off the highway. So I don't know if maybe they just did a new roof or something, or you know, maybe not. But uh, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't. I've just visited the one time, so I don't know what the situation is. Maybe they're getting a new sign because this just. How was the traffic there when you got there? Well, this was during that um, gas issue with the hurricane and all that, so traffic was mild. But I'm guessing it was very few cars on the road because of the gas shortages, or at least fewer. I don't know. You have to ask. Anything. I mean, like, I mean, like people like in the gun shop. Like, was there a lot of people in and out of there? Or? Mm, I think it was just me and Edge. Oh, this one. This one's like a well. You can see it's just kind of a small shop, um, and it's mostly like old, dirty reloading stuff. So, while that might be interesting to some people, I'm sure there's all kinds of people that are like, nope, just want new, brand new. That's it. You know, I want unopened, brand new stuff all the time, and it has to be. Oh crap! But yeah, little Chicago gun. Yeah, I'm guessing because it's okay. in the That's one of them, them neat little hole in the wall places. Oh yeah, I'm just guessing that since this thing is in where it is and with all that stuff on top of it, that looks like it's been there for a bit. That this is collection. Like, hey, look at what we got. I don't know if it was. I don't think that was a price tag. I think it was just a, uh, you know, something to look at when you come in the shop kind of thing. Eye but, candy. Yeah, these old powders were kind of neat. I'm guessing the same thing with them. Oh wow. It's an odd display. They got like a piece of antler. Are these? These are pumps off of a shotgun. Spurs, old-fashioned powders. I'm pretty sure that's 7.62 by 39 ammo. Some kind of weird piece of metal, maybe a thing of powder, I guess. Yeah, that's so where do we put this in? Yeah, just throw it in there. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I'll just set it here, and then I forgot where I set it. <laughs> but nice selection of guns. Looks like a bunch of new stuff. So every day. Cool yeah, it's a nice little shop. We try to feature a gun shop every single day. Uh, we're featuring some shops here that we did on the tour. But if you've got shops, let us know. You can always email us at dailygunshow at gmail.com. We're always interested in finding out about new gun shops. Hopefully, we'll all be back on the road here in a bit and uh, be checking out some new ones, too. That is burning. Sure. That was, that's kind of a cool-looking old shop, though. Let's see. We can do the showdown, or we could do something else. I mean, the showdown takes the longest if you want to just get, do that, or I mean, it's up to you guys. I don't care. Grab it over here. Yeah, let's do a showdown. So every week we, uh, on Wednesdays, we go in and take a look at the uh, people that have used the hashtag Daily Gun Show on the Instagrams, and we take a look at how many pictures there are, and then we judge them. Daily guns. How about daily gun show? Here we go. Fifteen oh seven. What do we have last week? Fourteen seventy two. So thirty something. We get about thirty a week. What is this one? Oh, that's from June. I wonder. I don't remember it. All right, so we're in the, the new ones already, right? And then holler when you see something you remember. Did we have the pillow last week already? No, nah, but I remember the Ninja. I remember the Glock. This one? Okay, so this is that little knobby thing from Travis. I guess Clover sent him this. Is this is Clover out there? This is the thing from across the table, for across the aisle from us at uh, Tulsa. Is that the thing the mom and the kid were selling? I think it was, yeah. You were in Tulsa, were you? No, but I, I remember you guys talking about it. Oh, okay. So I think that's what that is. Yeah. Is that, that one, one of them ones with like, angles or something? I don't know exactly what it did. It's a foregrip, but I don't know what the different what the deal is. I don't think it's one of those ball and socket type. Oh, okay. Can't see what Clover says. Yeah, the kid crossed the arm loader. So that's cool. So uh, I guess Travis won that on a something, some kind of contest he had over there, a giveaway. And we got uh, Dead Horse did that pillow and put it up on eBay. 
Miss Maggie won it for about 70, 80 bucks or something. So appreciate that very much. Very, very much. Dead horse threw all that money at me. We could throw it at gun channels. Um, and then just make it to a picture. Really cool, Philip. <laughs> That'd be something you'd give to your kid one day. And they'd be like, what the hell is this? Uh, then we got a uh, ghost throwing up a post about his uh, uh, video. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, we're making the thumbnails anyway. Why not post them on Instagram? It makes sense. Uh, that's a cool one. Oh, did I thumb that one? Yeah. Um, a you go before and after. That's kind of cool. U.S. barrel. Chopped up receiver. Wonder if he's going to... Oh, he's going to re-weld it. So the idea here is to take a partial or a chopped up receiver and then put it back together as a, a semi-auto receiver. Be pretty cool. I think I, would, I wouldn't try to do that. Nice looking German and a Hungarian. Let's try to do there. Romanian and a well, they're probably both Romanian, but nice looking set. Do how you repost and Chris. This was uh, the other day. I guess six days ago, uh, Dead Horse was in a chat. He got this gun cheap, I think, because it wouldn't work. And we were farting around with it, or he was farting around with it, and asked questions and stuff. And then I think he got it working. So he ended up getting a real cheap gun. It looks a lot like my one Mossberg, but it's not a Mossberg, I don't think. Oop, there's a bunch of pictures on it. And then two hotty posts in them. You guys ever shot a single action or a bolt action 22 like that? Oh yeah, something about that was that like a cricket or something? Oh hell no! This is like a big old Mossberg. It's big. Yeah, it's like a tube fed. This is the tube under in the barrel. But this plastic thing that the trigger guard and the plastic, you know, you can tell there's little finger grooves there. That thing is just so freaking comfortable. They knew what they were doing. This is super old too. They were doing back then. Yep. Chris with uh, color fill. Did we do the Who Wins This War? It's got a heart on it. I might have done this on the Instagram. But uh, that's from that one movie where they talk about a lion versus a tuna. Yeah. There's that gun all together again. Like I say, I got a Mossberg. looks just like this. So it must have been like uh, a design that many companies used or something. Or one company made it. A lot of people branded it or something. That's that same gun, but a different picture from Chris. Where's this one from? Jimmy's showing us his balls. <laughs> Got my balls in my hand for you guys. Tiny little balls. You just <laughs> the difference there between a what? Uh, double lot and triple lot buck. Wonder why one of them is hardened and the other one ain't. Or that's what it looks like at least. One of them is is a cheaper brand. This one from Studley. Hmm. And a close up of that wood grain. Nice. Little difference between like nice, smooth, healthy, moisture rich wood, and then old dried out, you know, the grain start to fall apart wood. What is that? Is that polymer? No. That's from metal, huh? I don't know what that one is. Oh, it's an EMP. Is that nine millimeter then? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Look at that giant safety. Look at that giant safety just waiting to be flipped inadvertently. All right, so next we're going to another color. This is the same gun with a different color color or a different gun? That's a different gun. That's a good gun. Block 30. Oh, yeah, the other one was a 19. I like this picture, too. It's like with a flash, I guess. Really cool. <laughs> There's some um, throwback to the July Patreon patch of the month. So we only had three people doing the patch of the month, I guess. Uh, that's the that's good guy with a guns gun. I bought it for a while and then sold it back to him. Nice having a big F once in a while. I guess a medium size 357 once in a while. Six shot. Then I sold it back to him. Damn it. I needed the money. Uh, who the hell is go to gear? Do we know them? I don't know. I'm subscribed to them. I know there's somebody. It's a fancy looking gun. I guess it's not a Glock. It's probably a stupid lone wolf frame and a bunch of crap. So it's kind of a Glock platform, but not Glock. Uh, I reposted a couple. Oh, no, this is Ghost. I reposted a couple, too. So it's kind of cool. Ghost showing stuff going out to his Patreon people. Ghost is our member of the day. It's the kind of shit he does that gets you into member of the day. 
I gotta do is send a bunch of people a bunch of free shit. You're a member of the day. Easy. Clover Tech with these are stickers, huh? These stickers, Clover. I, I thought at first they were like badges or something because of the shine. I was like, oh snap, you got a bunch of like, uh, you know, like a badge or like a name tag type of thing. I'm thinking the badges, or I mean they're stickers. Yeah. Uh, then another seventeen a gray four. Oh, dang, I'm not used to seeing the backstrap go all the way down. All mine are cut right here. You like that color? That urban gray or whatever? Yeah. Country. Nick. The dead horse showing off some of his ARs he sleeps with. A little SIG. Aw. Kind of cool. That was cute. He's like a little pug puppy. Mm -hmm. this, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. There's Yankee's weird. Would you want that weird looking camo on your gun? Quote unquote camo paint spill? No, that looks dumb. Well, that's a dumb looking gun, too, though. I don't like the camo, no. It looks like you set your gun down and then you spilled your nail polish on it or something. And then yeah. it does go into the slide. Like, oh no, that doesn't look weird or anything. Let's just have it all stop right there. Like it was blue, but then I dropped it down the side of a mountain, and it looks like this now. Yeah, like I got a bunch of chalk on it, and then it says <laughs> undertow right on it. What the hell does that mean? Undertow? Yeah, I don't even know what that means. So, is there an awesome thing from the other day? <laughs> does it say Iron Maiden right there? So, yeah, I think that's what it says in Chinese. So then no. Bob is the one looking at the camera. This with one? the beard on. You're the one with the face covered. And then I'm the one walking up with the cigarette. This one? Yeah. I'm, I'm this guy. <laughs> I'm over here with the ladies. I'm over here with the ladies. Bob's over here with some weird alien dude. And you're fighting the guy with the camera, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a robot, I think. Either a robot or an insect. Um, probably both. And I can read this in my robot. I don't know what robot. Uh, there's uh, perks going out to the December uh, Patreons. Thanks. Uh, Flippy made these. This was uh, gun nuts that we came up with. When I get super bored and want to match chats, I'll just open up Photoshop and play. So uh, I did this one night. He was talking about gun nuts, I think. So I put together this one. I didn't like it. So I made one look like the Wolverines. And Flippy made the stickers. So we got a bunch of them over there. Can't sell them because they look too much like stupid Mr. Peanut, but I can give them to my Patreon people. So thanks very much for supporting what we're doing. All of this stuff and more. The other one with Chris, he's loving those string fields. Man, yeah. those, and that a lot looks a lot like where Partisan Rock is. I need to go hang out with him up in Colorado. There's uh, the other side of that. Uh, Angelina reposting um, Clover. This is a video we made. Take a look at the patch panel that we used for the prizes at the Tactical Pop Quiz. So we do the daily gun show. And that was the information about it. And then a couple of pictures. These are some of those prize packs we've got for the daily gun show, or I mean the Tactical Pop Quiz. And then here is a bigger picture of all of the patches on the patch panel. So if you want to go check it out, feel free. And we're better than butter. So there's Clover's other stickers. These are the ones for the, sh the SHOT Show campaign. So uh, kind of the slot machine motif. Yeah, those are pretty neat. I, was, I saw those earlier. There's two hottie reposting three guys' gun. And then I logged onto the Gun Channels account, which I barely ever do, and uh, reposted a couple. And then, what the hell is this? This dog bodies. Oh, this is probably a thing he uses to train dogs with. You put that on your arm, and the dog eats it. They bite it, yeah. He has to put it next to that antler. And it's a violent. That's, I think that's old, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's old, yeah. All right, so we're starting somewhere down around here. And we're going up. When you pick them up. Hey, it missed, the, it missed that one that I just posted uh, today, too. So I think it missed a couple. It may. It does that. I could try to refresh. 
Oh, this is hours ago. I don't think it changed either. Go all the way up into the top ones. Did you? Oh, yeah. See, that, them two. The, the, the pinky grip one and the Glock one. And this one. They're all yours. And that one. Yeah, what's up with that? Uh, they're blocking early watch from this. No, they're trimming it up to the top. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like right. you got to give it That's to good. Dot Graham. So sorry about that, but you posted it. He said, let me have it. No. Let you give it to him. <laughs> no. That's not how that works at all. I'm <laughs> sure that's the way it works. All right, Bob. So, which one are you picking? I think we were down. Uh, I'm going to pick the Ghost Home Defense on a Budget thing. He reposted his uh, little thing because I think that's kind of cool. Other than, you know, the shitty guns. Yeah, but I like the way he did that outline. That really works. And you can see the background still. Pretty decent. Yeah, it almost looks like something from a video game. Seriously, or like a, like a TV thing or something. You did a good job of getting like all the points across here. Yep. So yep. Definitely. Well, I'm definitely not picking the Maverick 88. I'm going to go with the uh, that one. The Glock 30 in the tree. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Chris's. Hmm. Glock 30 in a tree. That sounds like it could be a song. Yeah, it could awesome. be. Well, I didn't think about this one at first. I did like the picture, but I don't know which one to pick. Honestly, I probably would have picked this one, but it's my own picture. So I think I am going to go with this one. Here's why. It's a Glock 30 and not a stupid Glock 30S. And I have a G30, so I feel like I, in a way, have one of these also. Except mine's not. <laughs> mine's a fan. But I'm um, also pick this one. So that's the that's the best picture on Instagram this week right there. Congratulations, Chris. In your guys' opinion. No, no. We already figured it out. So that's how it is. Yes. Did uh, he win last week, too? I know mm, not no. I think he's got a bad ratio of, like, actually getting picked versus how many times he uses our hashtag. But I know we've picked him before. He's won a few times, but you can't win every time. No, yeah. No. He gets picked almost every time, one of his pictures. But he doesn't win every time. Okay. Well, it definitely is well deserved. I really do like that picture, and especially like as I'm looking at it more, how you can kind of see some tree behind it like that, like it's not just in a freaking dark room or something. I like that one. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool how he did that. And then there's other people out there that are agreeing. We got Glock 30 in a tree, Glock in a tree. So it could be all photoshopped, you know. It could be, but he's really good at it though. So uh, thanks, everybody who participates. 30 a week is pretty cool. Uh, if you want to play along, then just go onto the Instagram. Use the hashtag Daily Gun Show. If you don't know how to do that, jump over to Gun Channels and ask people. And we'll show you. It's fun. And uh, we will judge the best picture next week. So you got 50. Like 50 chance to be the best picture on Instagram. That's true. So high quality. Right on. Yeah, she does like... Uh, to like a what do they call it? She lays like another layer on top for UV protection. Uh, to how you saying Chris's photography is good, and that he, he deserves to win every once in a while for sure. Meh. Oops. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about. Oh, they're talking about people being sick. So, Bob, come to suck it up. Got a show to do here. Talking about being sick. Yeah. If you're, if, if you, yeah, you know, I don't know. If you're sick, suck it up, Buttercup. Jesus <laughs> Christ, people these days. So, um, I was going to ask something. Uh, since we quit doing the healthy tip a while back, let's bring the healthy tip back for a second. Uh, I usually do this like routine where I go to the store, go to the dollar store, some cheap, and I look for <coughs> what do they call those things? Like, um, airborne or something it was like some kind of pill you take if you're going on an airplane or like if you're going to be in a crowd of people and i go look at those pills and i figure out what the ingredients are and then i buy the dollar version of just the ingredients so if it's like the main ingredients are something with an e i think and that's my i can't remember what the ingredients are so i was just going to find out from you guys and then the people watching if you have ever done some kind of a regimen or something to get yourself prepped uh vitamins or other herbs and 
fancy concoctions or something in order to prep for horrible, contagious, swampy Petri dish that we're going to be in for a week in Vegas in the dungeon of the Sands Convention Center. Um, no windows, no airflow, except for the unfiltered, recirculated farts that we have to breathe and everybody coughing and snotting on each other's hands and then shaking hands and kissing each other and you know, all kinds of weird things in the alleys. So um, everybody comes home sick and uh, I'm wondering if people have any tips because I'm no doctor, but it worked for me last year. Whatever, I think I just went to the dollar store, like I said, looked at the ingredients, bought like three bottles that seemed to be the main ingredients in some of them. Problem is I don't know where I put them. So I have to go do that again and I don't really feel like spending you know, like an hour in the stupid store trying to figure it out. So if somebody's got some tips, or maybe a link to a video you did or something, or a blog post you've seen on how to strategies for that. I'd be curious for sure. And then these guys should probably be curious, you know, be interested too. I could care less about doing that kind of stuff. I think that's silly. You're either gonna get sick or you're not. Um, you don't think there's anything in your immune system? No, I don't think there's anything to that. I think if you're already eating healthy, you've already got all that in you. So as long as you make sure you eat fruit and shit and eat reasonably healthy. You'll be fine. I know I'm saying it too, but I know vitamin C. Like I've heard enough doctors talk about it. Like I don't know what you're supposed to eat for vitamin C, but you can eat a lot of vitamin C and not get hurt by it. So you can like ten times your normal amount of vitamin C, and that helps. Like there's people that I've, I've just heard everybody say that, and the only people that don't are the people that deny everything. So, but anyway, I really do think there's something to that, and I'd be curious. So, um, you people well, that. Never I never take anything and I never get sick, so no. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, I don't as far as going into a room with a bunch of people, I don't know how much you can get with that, but you're obviously living up there. You gotta be whatever more hardy to airborne diseases, I would think, because I just don't have them down here. Right? At least getting um, the, the earth just stay frozen in the cold air, so really we just that's why we don't get sick, but I don't get sick when I go down there either, so well, I don't think when you're down here, you're not, you know, in confined rooms hardly ever. Shot shows for me, it's the only time I have to go in because even the NRA is usually in a decent convention center. I mean, I like Shot Show. Yeah, that's true. Not like the Sands, the lame place. But uh, yeah, that's the only time of the year that I'm usually in a giant room with, I don't know, forty six thousand people plus the vendors plus the security and, and whatever you call the people, the support staff that run the place. You know, where people running food, garbage cans, and everything. There's probably I don't know how I many that would be. Almost mm -hmm. 70,000 people in this little dungeon basement. Anyway, so uh, I guess we can move on. Now I'm feeling like my throat's sore just from talking about it. We're getting some stuff out there. Uh, eat garlic. It's antiviral. Oh, really? And then, uh, a lot of garlic. Enchinacha. Mm -hmm. How do you say that one? Yeah, that I don't know what that is. Either. Whatever that is, that's, I'm pretty sure the one I was thinking of, and I didn't know. So I'm just going to buy a bottle of that. If you eat garlic, not only is it an antiviral, but it also keeps people from getting that close to you because it actually sweats oh, yeah. up your pores. So people will tend to stay away from you. Even the close talkers, those are the ones you always got to worry about, right? Those are the ones who want to stand like six inches away from your face and talk to you. <laughs> but, yeah. You just have to let your body have a immune system. So, you know, if you if you don't worry about trying to protect yourself from germs all the time, germs will eventually just not bother you. Whatever. I don't sit around worried about germs <laughs> in a mask. I just don't go into a giant dungeon with seventy thousand people except for once a year. Yeah, yeah. Well, apparently Howie Mandel won't shake hands with anyone either because he's worried about germs. Well, think about it this way: got a bunch of filthy. Uh, uh, not, they're not illegal. They're probably not illegal, but there's a bunch of filthy foreigners in there that are, uh, I don't know what kind of diseases they have. And they were on planes with all kinds of other foreigners that had diseases. I'm worried about them bird flus and the monkey diseases. SARS. They're squirrel diseases, probably. They're, they're birds and monkeys, then. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. They're, you've seen it. You've been there. You're not new to the experience. There's a ton of people in there. They're from all over the place. I'm sorry. Bother me. I get oh. sick probably. I've been going. This will be my what did I say? Thirteenth year? No, yeah, thirteenth year. Five to yeah, thirteenth year. And uh, a couple of the guys one year lefty went up there, perfectly healthy. Got sick like the first day. 
and he was just miserable for the entire time. And there's nothing he could do because he wasn't going to fly home. He didn't have the money or the interest to fly home. So he just stayed in the hotel being freaking miserable for the entire week. Uh, and then a couple other times, I would say a third of the time, we're miserable. I mean, usually pain enough, interested enough to keep going, even though we're sick. But that's why everybody gets sick because, you know, you're there for a week. You're not there for two months. So you got to cram everything into a week, whether or not you're super sick or not. Uh, but anyway, we've been sick before, and it's no fun. Not only is it no fun, but it's uh, it's just just freaking horrible having to be sick and go through there. So anyway, I'm uh, I saw that um, one of the Travis said he's gonna make up a couple of videos, so I'd appreciate it. Please throw them on gun channels. I don't go browse through YouTube for stuff like that, so I appreciate that. Actually, you know what I did notice last year was a lot of uh, Asian people were walking around there wearing face masks, like little uh. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm Basically, thinking about it. I was just like, oh, that's because they're so paranoid about germs. Or maybe because they're guilty that mandated. Well, they might just be afraid they're going to breathe in like white people germs. I don't know. Asians are racist. I don't know if there's any foreigners watching the chat. If there's any foreigners watching the chat, Foreigners to the United States. Obviously, we're all foreigners to you. You're all a bunch of foreigners. Uh, Midnight says Jimmy has the butt flu. I agree. Jimmy has butt flu. I disagree. I don't know what that is. Oh, hand sanitizer. What do you guys think about you burger against hand sanitizer too, Bob? Um, yeah, generally, other than it is good to put on your feet if you got stinky feet. Oh, nice. <laughs> so that explains why Bob just occasionally sits down in the middle of the aisle. Pulls off his boots and socks and starts rubbing his feet. I thought he was just rubbing his feet. Turns out he was hand sanitizing. Yeah. You just, you know, you just wipe off the excess hand sanitizer <laughs> back onto the onto the nozzle there. The best part is like, uh, a bag of stuff. So he sets the bag on the bench that was next to him. Then he sets on the floor. Everybody was like, really? <laughs> he puts the hand sanitizer back on himself. So, uh, I don't know about the hand sanitizer, but I, not just the guns. Nate's saying because of the guns. The, I don't know if the guns transfer diseases as much as just, like, how many times you walk up to somebody and they're like, <coughs> and then they shake your hand. Like, there's yeah. the shake hands that does it and all the kissing. Hmm. Yeah, wipe their nose and then reach to shake your hand or something. Like, yeah, that doesn't happen often. I assume everyone right before I seen them was wiping their nose. Wash your That's hands. The worst. That's a good one, but you know you forget. You know, you know, I don't go to these that often, so that I'm always on the thing. Um, I, it might be crazy, but I just I try not to wipe my face all the time. Right, that's what I'm saying. I I don't go to enough of these things to be aware of that. I don't think I could go four days without inadvertently touching my face. You know what I mean? I, I don't. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. I drink and shit. Ah. But, uh, the airborne. <laughs> Go ahead. I said, you guys. Oh, whatever. Then Bob, it'll be a classic when Bob gets down there and gets sick immediately. <laughs> I would never admit it. I could be sicker than a dog. I'd be wearing the pens. I'd just never admit it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way we walk in Canada. <laughs> oh, it must have been somebody else farted. <laughs> well, the other thing is, yeah. Well, we won't say anything. But it wouldn't. That would not go. Let's see. It would. It would not be all that strange of a smell to smell weird things at Shacha. You definitely smell That's weird. True. That's true. All right. So, um, oh, midnight says, "Good tip. Don't shake Jimmy's hand because of the butt flu." That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> healthy, healthy tip of the day. Right. I remember right. Jim said specifically he tried not to touch his face. <laughs> he doesn't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think we should do a gun of the day. And it's not the 483 Winchester, is it? Some other gun. It sure isn't. It's the Burton 1917 LMG. Or LMR, actually. So, uh, this is just a really cool gun. Uh, it's like, looks just like an AK. It's it's yeah, you know, it, it's 
it's uh, different. It uses basically, I think it's a scaled up 380 Remington. What? Oh, what? In that big a magazine? No, not 308. That. 308. Not that. You're looking at a long. It's the top one with the magazines on top of the. Oh. oh. This gun. Oh, the gun the Forgotten Weapons did yesterday, probably. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> did it a while ago. <laughs> but this is really cool. It was originally designed for like a, a self defense gun for airplanes, but it was also made that it could be used on the ground if it needed to be. But oh, it thanks. doesn't. It doesn't feed from both magazines. It feeds from one or the other. So when yeah. one dries, is the other one like is it automatic or do you got to switch it or what? You got to switch it. You have to lift the old one up a little bit and then slam the full one down. Um, but it's yeah, basically it's uh, it works a lot like that uh, the Remington rifle, right? Semi-automatic rifle from the day. No, there's Other no replica rifles that have two Mickey Mouse bat mags sticking out of the top of them. Well, I think the reason, and one of the reasons I've heard why they did it in the airplane was so that you didn't have magazines flying around the cockpit. But, yeah, that, so, and it worked. I mean, that was the big thing. But think about this. The 1917, that's a pretty damn cool semi-automatic or fully automatic rifle. Fires both. You said it's a 380? Well, um, yeah, the three. Not 380 pistol, 380 rifle, you know. Oh, so it's like a mid range. Okay. No, it's it's more like a, almost a full. See, one of the reasons is they couldn't use just a 303 round. Uh, they wanted to use bullets that had incendiary in them, so they wanted a slightly bigger bullet. So, you know, there was a 410 Winchester cartridge for semi-automatic rifle. So, and then there was a smaller one, a 380. So it's a you know. A bigger bore it's almost a half inch bore right or almost a 40 caliber bore um so it gave you more a bigger bullet so you had room to put the incendiary in ah uh, i got you yeah so it was actually quite a powerful bullet i mean those things were used for big game hunting those those uh semi-auto remington rifles back or, then they just been shooting like biplanes what was the airplanes in 17 yeah they were biplanes in world war one so they'd be wood and so they were just, and they were shooting, they were shooting the dudes, right? They weren't trying to shoot the planes down. Oh no, they'd try to take the plane down too. If they could hit the plane, that was good. Yeah. Well, but I mean, a bunch of holes in a fabric plane, they would try to shoot the dude, and if they hurt the plane, great. But they were trying to kill the guy, right? Then they would yeah, but I mean, they could, they could hit the plane and cut a control wire and all kinds of stuff. So they just wanted to hit the plane anywhere. And also, they were incendiary, so they could start a fire. You hit it, the fuel tank, it could start the fuel on fire. I mean, the guys didn't have parachutes. That was pretty much a guaranteed kill. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting gun that I think they only made about three or four of, or not that many, more than that, I guess. But, yeah, there weren't that many produced. And, you know, when you think they already had the Lewis gun and, and guns like that, they didn't really need it. So, I think they came out with a better bullet that didn't have to be larger diameter or something. Uh, David's asking for my email. It's gun websites. Gun websites at gmail .com. Yeah. So, anyway, that's the gun of the day. I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, I don't think I've seen one ever in that time period. I haven't seen one with two mags like that ever. I don't think. But he said there's only three of them. Well, no, I think there was more than that made. Um, I'm not sure how many though. I, you know, it could be in the thousands. I walked away there, but basically the idea is that you stage them. It's just stage in a mag, so you don't have to look for it. Right. Well, it's staged, but it also it feeds right in too. You don't have to move it to the other spot. Right. Yeah. So that was the advantage, and I believe those are single stack mags too. So, but it it held twenty rounds in each magazine. Doesn't seem like a lot airplanes no but back in those days i mean what you had 47 rounds in a lewis gun so that wasn't that many either so yeah 
the machine gun time to the props and stuff? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Vickers guns, they would have probably three, four hundred round belts. But the Lewis gun that was the one you'd always see shooting over the top wing, had the drum magazine. Oh, okay. Or it'd be, you know, the back seater would use it. That was kind of the other gun that was, you know, also utilized for that. So one of the things we talk about each day, we're over an hour now. So one of the things we talk about each day is uh, history. Uh, looks like Alabama, Alabama seceded from the Union today in 1861. I'm um, driving down here to see if there's anything else interesting. Soviet Red Army encircled Sir Stalingrad today in 1943. 1948, President Truman proposes free two-year community colleges for all who want an education. Boring. So the fun part about history, it's yesterday, I guess, or today or whatever it is for you, is this is the day that Colt died. So uh, he was born in 1814, but died in 1862, today in 1862. A little thing on the Instagram. Uh, the more I learn about Colt, the more I like him. So uh, he's a cool dude. He uh, started out as, I think they said his dad gave him to somebody to like work for his education. He had to work all day and then got taught at night or something. He learned about gunpowder and he started playing around with gunpowders. This is in the 18, early 1800s and uh, learned about it from a book and started playing around and then eventually burned down his house or burned down the school or something and got in trouble and moved on and then he was working for his dad and uh, finally, oh he burned down the place and then his dad sent him off on a boat to learn how to be a naval guy I guess and that's where he learned about the Thing that they put on some kind of wheel on the boat that does something to lock it into place and that gave him the idea to take the pepper boxes of the day and put something in there that basically locks it in place with the the cylinder within the chamber with the bore so um up until that point the pepper boxes you just sort of hand moved the cylinders uh, or if they did move mechanically they didn't lock so that was what his uh, part was to the development of firearms was to make the the first modern locking bolt revolver, which was uh, made possible through interchangeable parts, which wasn't his first go around at it, but uh, he did fail a few times in business and kept pursuing it and eventually got with the right people, figured out the right process to make interchangeable parts. Obviously, that was the way to go. I think it started the Industrial Revolution, and uh, we have modern peaceful society today because of Colt's invention. Uh, he also created a modern firearm that could shoot more than one shot and he revel you know that that changed the everything uh, up until then the only thing he had was a double barrel shotgun or some of them weird things that bob's been showing us the last couple of days so <laughs> they put in your hand a multi-shot pistol uh, like they say um how does it say god created man colt made him equal yeah basically god created man but colonel colt made them equal so kind of neat. He started out, you know, not moderate means, uh, had plenty of uh, unsuccessful businesses, ended up when he died, he was one of the most wealthy people in the United States. Pretty cool. A lot of people give up because he was just a salesman, but he also uh, didn't use some techniques and things. He drove around uh, when he failed at being uh, creating firearms. He decided to uh, learn something else from his book or learn something, take something else he learned from his books and uh, traveled around uh, getting people uh, doing nitrous oxide, uh, what do they call those shows, where I think back in the day they just put up a big tent and put nitrous oxide in there and people would go in there, get all loopy and come out and giggle. And uh, he drove around the United States and Canada learning how to sell and learning how to, well, making money and learning how to sell, came back with that money and that those things that he learned from that adventure, I guess, and uh, applied that to uh, using the firearms and uh, as gifts and to, uh, you know, uh, I want to say, you know, butter people up, take them out, show them a good time, and sell them some guns. And uh, like I say, some people don't respect any of that stuff. They say that is, you know, he was more of a showman. But as I say, the more I read about him, the more I learn about him. I think he's a pretty interesting uh, piece of history as far as guns go. 
Yeah, he uh, did die kind of young, though. How many years is that? 70-something? 64? No, 60. Yeah, there's no way to do the math on that. Yeah, there is. What year was he born? 1814 to 1852. 1814 to 1852? 62. 62. So uh, he would have been 58. So that's young? Yeah. Super old. That's old for them days, ain't it? No, uh Actually, the average lifespan, people did get to be fairly old. One of the reasons it, that the average lifespan seems so young is because everybody died in childbirth. So all those little young people dying made your average lifespan much shorter. But people would still live to be 80 years old. That was, you know, common. Once you made it past, you know, 40 and hadn't died, you were usually pretty good unless you got sick. You know what else makes people lifespan shorter? Not wearing a wind. What the? Yeah, that's it. Is that a cold? Gatling gun? That, it was actually that was a uh, uh, an M4. Well, it's, it says it was an M4. <laughs> you know how these YouTube sound effects work, anyway. Pew pew uh, pew. Yeah, it's... pew 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 pew. No, I think you, know how, you know how they made the noise for Star Trek or Star Wars blasters? Do you know where they got the noise from? What? You know, uh, like an antenna or like uh, basically an antenna. Sometimes, like a, a electrical uh, pole will have like a guy line. The Tethers that come down and anchor into the ground, those big fat cables, right? That hold the poles yeah. up going over in the wind. Go up to one of them and smack on it with like a rock or a hammer. And that's where they, they recorded that. And that's where they got the lasers from Star Wars. I saw that on a show. Nice. Pew, pew, pew. Well, that's the uh, tactical quiz, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, everybody knows what that sounds mean, so time to crack them knuckles, whip out them keyboards. Today, we're going to play a little memory game with you guys. What yeah. the heck? Just <laughs> <laughs> that was a little early. But yeah, today we're gonna... Bro, done. we're done. We're running late. <laughs> Wrap it up. Come on. Uh, um, a little memory game. So, memory game? Today, yeah. Uh oh. Put down Today's the tactical pop quiz. Put on Put, your thinking caps, folks. Put down the popcorn. <laughs> what was yesterday's? What? Uh, or well, what was Bob's gun of the day for yesterday? What was yesterday's gun of the day? There's no way to know that. John Browning is not the answer. <laughs> No answer. Hot. Answer. So tough. There's so many different ways to get the answer. Nobody's taking any of them. The Glock? Is it the Glock? Is it the Browning <laughs> High Point? No. No. <laughs> also, not a 1911. Something stupid says too hotty. Well, maybe that was true. <laughs> boring? <laughs> no, not boring. Well, it's not the answer. Smoothboard gay lock? No. no. <laughs> I need the gun? actual no. name, yeah. not the action. Yeah, the puckle gun was actually a couple days before. Yes, wasn't yesterday. Single action. Wasn't airsoft. God damn that forty shot thing! I don't think that counts. Oswald gun? No. That weird it's looking gun that doesn't count. Boy, oh boy! I think I think uh, we may just have you know <laughs> stumped the crowd. Stump them. It's so hard to bug us off. Yeah, I think they're just yeah. I, I unbelievable. We've done it twice already too. It wasn't even the first time we did it. Yeah. Oop. Well, that other time was quite a while ago. Sad. Chain pistol. Uh, you guys are getting close. Why don't you just name it though? Warm. You're very warm. You're very warm. Yeah. Travis Tiananmen and uh, Too Hotty, Too Hotty. Scotty. Very close. 
I don't know. I, I think give another, give another 30 yeah. seconds and then they just not willing to do the research. Yeah. It's not to bug us all. Forty shot butt flu revolver. <laughs> what is it with midnight range and butt flu? He's really a upset. Thing, that. And that's worrisome for somebody who's a cook. Yeah, some some people got a thing. I think we got it finally. I think. Got Snap. Most of it. Let's check it out. Is that acceptable? Mm -hmm. and that's acceptable yes. to me. If you take I think that's the right that's the right name. I would call it. Yeah. All right. Congratulations, Pink. You are the winner. Bob. <laughs> so, Pink, you know what that makes you? That makes you today's tactical pop quiz hot shot <sighs> of the day. Ew. A little bit of. Thank you, Pink, for uh, paying attention to the Daily Gun Show. And knowing how to click two buttons to figure out what. <laughs> <laughs> it was a 40 shot old thing, but it had a name. The guy it? <coughs> not a Not a chick's cut. It was a guy's guy caught. Yeah, guy caught chain pistol, but. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Pink. It kind of just snuck out on me. <laughs> That's why you got the depends. So we will <laughs> go to, I think we're done. That's it, right? Oh, no, we got a movie. We talk about we got a, movie. a movie. So I watched this <laughs> one the other day on the Amazon, so that's why I threw it in here. I think it was a while ago now. But uh, every day we try to talk about a gun-related movie, something you haven't seen in a while, or if you're a young and something you ain't seen yet, today it is Serpico. So it's this old movie from 1973. I forget the guy's name in it. Some famous actor. And then uh, he's like a cop. I think it's a real movie or a real story, right? Some cop. Yeah, it's yeah, you know. Days when it was dirty police or whatever. And uh, he's like, uh, what do they call them? Dang. What do they call it when they're like, not a bell ringer? They call it something when you're telling people about what's going on. Whistleblower. Whistle Whistle yeah. So yeah, he's some a rat. And uh, yeah, pretty tough, weird movie. I really liked it because it's from the '73, so it's freaking cool watching a '73 movie. But then it's pretty good. Uh, a lot of weird '70s guns in it, and crazy '70s police tactics and gun tactics and stuff. Which I'm not sure if the show is trying to be realistic or not, but it's certainly interesting to see the old guns. And then uh, the story is pretty good, I guess. What do you guys think? I liked it. It's been a really long time since I've seen it, but I would definitely give it a thumbs up and think it's worth checking out. Yeah, it was sure. better than the other one. What was the other one where he was like a bank robber and he ended up being gay or something like that? Dog, dog something? Uh, reservoir Dogs. No, no, that wasn't the Chino. Um, dog, something dog like the Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dog Day Afternoon, yeah. That one was weird. But yeah, I like Serpico, though. Yeah, I hadn't seen it in a while, but it's on Amazon now, so you can just yeah. go watch it. I, I, I'll give Serpico two thumbs up. It was pretty good. And it's a cool 70s movie, and those are always kind of cool. It's like Rich, reliving my childhood. Rich is saying that he's an anti-gunner. The actor or the character? I guess the, the character probably an anti-gunner. The actor was, yeah. The character would have been an anti-gunner. He's a New York cop. I'm sure he would have been anti-gun. I don't think Pacino yeah, likes guns. Shot in the head. <laughs> well, yeah. Dang it. All right, so um, I don't know. Is there anything else to say about it? Eh, I'd check it out if you get the chance, especially if it's on Amazon. You got it? Check it out. I don't know how long they stay on the rotation so that you can keep watching it. So, you know, if it's something you're interested in, you might want to go watch it before they decide to pull it out of rotation. you got to pay three bucks for it. If you've never seen it, definitely go check it out. Well, I'm going to give it one. I know that it's like a classic or whatever, but I mean, I think you could probably live your life and never see it and nothing's going to happen, but 
it is an interesting look at the 70s and a police a real police story i guess yeah a lot of his movies are cool too so i don't know all right all right well uh, i guess wrapping it up or did bob give it a thumb or anything you put any thumbs out yeah. there was it solid or was it soft medium I, I just gave it two thumbs up i didn't elaborate oh. too much on it yeah two thumbs up and up all right, so then uh, we're going to be into episode 484 tomorrow. That has to be something, because if you take the fours and add them up, that's an eight. You have two eights, and 88 is pretty neat. So we've got uh, 484 coming up tomorrow. Uh, we'll be talking about gun gifts, around $20, because everybody talks about that kind of stuff before Christmas. Let's talk about it when it's not a you know, Christmas gift, when it's just somebody, I don't know, what would you give a gift for, first birthday or some kind of anniversary or something? Uh, then we'll talk about training, uh, getting free help at local competitions, uh, and then what am I doing? Rolled over enough. We'll also be talking about CCW, when to take a class. So uh, we'll be doing the gun of the day and the gun shop and all the rest of the stuff as well. But I'm sure something will happen between now and then. This is a quite of a positive. Let's see here. So we got the early watts. Coming on around 9.30, 9-ish Eastern uh, in the morning. And then we have, let me click over here, tomorrow is Thursday. So uh, after the early watch, there will be a lobby, more than likely, and a lobby sprinkled throughout the day. Then we will be having the Outlaw Hatfield coming on at 8 Eastern. Uh, then Tack Daddy with Gun News Weekly at 9 Eastern. And I believe that is. This is your week with Yankee, ain't it? G? Damn it. All right. Yeah? Uh, South Point Blank or something like that? What's the name of that Point Blank movie? What? With, uh, the Hitman Comes Home for a Class Reunion. Gross yes. Point Blank. South Point. Gross, Gross Point Blank. Blank. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. <coughs> yeah, it is because last week I didn't have to do it. I have to do it this week. Um, and then after that, after hours, and we are going to be coming at you a little bit later. Last last week, I thought it was going to be later than it really was, but yeah, we'll be coming a little later uh, yeah, after the gonna, after hours post by Clover. We got to have a wide berth because we got to do Yankee Show, and then uh, Clover does his. And if that one goes long, we just move this one back. So stay tuned tomorrow. I'll be a little flexible with us on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, Thursday's the day where G-Webs get spread pretty thin, so. Well, every other Thursday. But, yeah, so that is Gun Channel tomorrow. And then uh, I think I said it, but you, we will uh, wrap up everything with the Daily Gun Show and do it all over again on Friday. Oh, wait, Yankee's sick, so we might not be going live tomorrow. That's a good point. Thanks for mentioning that. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, stay posted on that. You know what? A good way... That way, because then we're doing Yankees chat right before shot, and that seems way smarter than doing it. Well, he was—I don't think he was going to do it at shot. He usually leaves on Thursday, so he wouldn't have done it on at shot either, unless he got home and did it from home or something. But uh, anyway, I think it'd be better to do it next week if he does it that way. But we'll see. He might get all better. I mean, he sounds bad, but he wouldn't tell me if he was feeling as bad as he sounded. I don't know. Did he tell anybody? Um, because, you know, sometimes you just get, like, a head cold or a chest cold, and then, you know, you're not really wiped out. You just, you can't, it sounds like you're dying, but you're just clogged up or whatever. I don't know. I'm just thinking he might be okay because he was in the chat. You know, if you're seriously laid out, you're not interested in being in the chat or nothing. I don't know. But a good way to stay posted on that kind of information is to come on down to gunchannels.com if you haven't already. And uh, there's usually a live chat going at least the text chat going on but there's usually a live lobby going on and uh you can stay posted on that kind of stuff juice is asking me to take a look at the hk booth i have no interest in doing that so pink has a channel over on gun channels where he's uh offering to let people post things that they're interested in and then as he's walking around and others who are going to be at shot show can use that to monitor and see if we've caught everything that people want to see but um i stopped going to booths and taking pictures four years ago. I'm more interested in trying to get information about, um, from the Second Amendment uh, gun owners' rights groups, right, the Second Amendment groups. 
I'd like to get some information from them about what they think the most important movements or drives are going to be for us this year. And then I'm going to do what I can to use whatever contacts I still have in the people I know out there and get them to motivate their audiences into paying attention. We get a heck of a lot of attention from the gun owners to the Gun Owners America from Yankee and Mac right now. So, um, you know, there's always something to be said for the loud voices and the big organizations, but there's a 50 state level organizations at least, if not two per state. That means 100 local organizations that are doing the actual work. If you guys listen to Matt or Mac and uh, Eric on uh, Eric Pratt from Gun Owners of America this, after, this evening, um, their urge was, you know, support the national groups, but do work locally. I mean, they didn't say it that succinctly, but I think that was what they're trying to get across is don't think that Gun Owners of America is going to be your one savior for everything. You have to continue to act. So um, if you're there at SHOT and you're going to be creating content, remember that there's lots of uh, smaller groups out there that aren't Gun Owners of America that have just as much skin in the game and just as much interest in seeing liberty prevail. So uh, we have cameras and lots of them and uh, pointing a whole bunch of cameras at a new Ruger is interesting, but I'm more curious on trying to gauge, I don't know, whatever I can figure out from people that are in one town for one week and have massive audiences. I, I met with some of the people at the Gun Rights Policy Conference who are predominantly bloggers and podcasters. Uh, podcasters that don't use the YouTube as their medium, they use Skype. Okay, so we're talking people who aren't in our realm. I suspect a lot of our audiences don't we don't share a lot of audience, so that means we have more reach than we might have individually. If we could gather all that reach together and have a unified message, we'd be more powerful and a less uh, predictable adversary for the political strategists and the uh, antis out there. So uh, that's my goal at SHOT Show, is to continue work towards, um, I don't know, whatever the hell that is. If there was a blueprint, I'd tell you what I was trying to do, but I'm trying to figure out what to do. So I have almost no interest at all in checking out booths, and I ultimately have no interest in checking out HK, who hates their customers anyway. Um, and they're made in Europe, so I have nothing. I have that very little interest in HK, but pink might. So uh, um, we will have a bunch of cameras there. Now, if I happen to walk in past HK and I know somebody needs a picture of something, I can take a picture, but I'm not gonna put myself out there to run around looking at booths. I'm just not there for that. Um, but all right, so that's a sidetrack. But uh, thanks for the uh, thing, and hopefully uh, um, people can get some satisfaction out of that channel over on Gun Channels, where I'm sure we're going to be posting the pictures, so people can request them there. We can post them there, uh, kind of archive them there, and then uh, like so, if somebody takes a picture of the HK and you really want to see what it looks like on the other side, see what some pin does, or if a stock's going to work, uh, we'll be able to use that as a way to communicate with the human beings that are there and the human beings that are watching. Uh, so that we can, you know, accomplish all those specific pictures you're looking for. Or videos. I guess we'll all have video as well. Uh, I also wanted to say thanks. We have 31 people watching. We have 34 thumbs up. I think we got up to 50 or something tonight before we got boring. So, uh, again, thanks. That's a pretty decent ratio. And I don't think we ever bugged anybody for it. So, really do appreciate that. Let's us know as human beings that people are at least interested enough to click the button. And uh, that keeps us psychically motivated and, and fueled up and of course we hope that that tells the nra or what is it the nra the uh youtube logarithm that this show has an abundance of people who thought it was interesting so hopefully that'll get it recommended to more listeners and we'll have more people here tomorrow that's one of our goals all right well i think on that note we can wrap this puppy up so um uh, as everybody knows we like to close it out <laughs> Close out the show with a quote. Uh, today is going to be by Edmund Burke. Uh, before that, though, I just want to remind everybody, please like, share, subscribe, thumbs up. Everybody's been doing, oh, up to 42 thumbs up now. So uh, very cool. Thanks, guys. And uh, if you can, support us on Patreon. Tech, I keep the show going. We'll do our bit. You guys keep asking us questions and giving us uh, advice, and we'll do, you know, I guess we'll just do it all together. So anyway, Edwin, Ed, Ed, Edmund Burke. It's not what a lawyer tells me I may do, but what humility, reason, and justice tell me I ought to do. And isn't that the way we should all live our lives? 
Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all tomorrow.